I now ask that uh, I ask consent the pending motion be set aside so that I may call up my motion, which is at the desk. Is there objection? Without objection, the clerk will report. Senator from Maryland, Ms. Mikulski, moves that the managers on the part of the Senate at the conference on the disagreeing votes of the- Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the complete reading of the amendment be suspended. Without objection. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And sorry that I didn't ask that the quorum be vacated. I was so eager to get started. Uh, because I rise to offer a motion to instruct the conferees based on a bill that I've offered for the last three Congresses. That is the Paycheck Fairness Act. What does the Paycheck Fairness Act do? It finishes the job that we started with Lily Ledbetter. It would, in fact, instruct the conferees to make three reforms. Number one, uh, to advance the cause of making sure that women get equal pay for equal work. It would stop retaliation for sharing pay information. Often workers are harassed and humiliated just for asking about coworkers' salaries. Second, it would stop employers from using any reason to pay women less. Oh, the guys do harder jobs. Women aren't breadwinners. Okay, it is time for equal pay for equal work. It would also allow punitive damages for women who've been discriminated against when the only deterrent against pay discrimination is the threat of paying women back pay. Discrimination can be factored into the cost of doing business. Mr. President, yesterday was Equal Pay Day, something we unfortunately commemorate each year. It symbolizes that it takes 104 days longer in a year for, than it does for a man to make, uh, for, for a woman to earn what a man earned the previous year. What does that mean? It means that for a man and what he earns in 365 days, it takes a woman 469 days to earn the same amount of money, 104 days more. We don't commemorate this day with joy, but with a call to action. We need to make a change in the federal law books to finally get equal pay in the federal checkbooks. Now, we want this in the Budget Act because we know that this will be an important way of dealing with a variety of issues. We worked on this legislation for a number of years. And quite frankly, we're frustrated. We're frustrated that time and time and time again that we're trying to advance this cause. You know, it started over 50 years ago. In 1963, Lyndon Johnson, moving on the civil rights legislation, was thought that equal pay for women would be an easy thing to pass. At that time, only 11% of, of mothers were in the work workforce. Now, there are over 70% of mothers in the workforce. At that time, women were again paid 59 cents for every dollar a man earned. Well, we passed that Civil Rights Act. Now, gee, 50 years later, we're up to 78 cents for every man a dollar. Uh, for every dollar a man earns. So it's taken us 50 years to advance 20 cents. Well, that just doesn't work. So we, the women of America feel sidelined, redlined, and pink slipped for the way they're discriminated against, and then they face the harassment and intimidation when they simply ask questions to get the pay they deserve. What we now know is, again, the facts speak for themselves. Women earn 78 cents for every dollar a man makes. For women close to the retirement age, the wage gap increases to almost $14,000 a year. By the time she retires, the average woman has lost almost $400,000 in a lifetime of wages. The impact is you get less Social Security benefits, you have a less savings, and you face a grim possibility of poverty. What we also know is that 
This has a tremendous impact uh, in terms of single mothers. Over the weekend, there was a terrific article in the Washington Post saying if you wanted to eliminate poverty among children, you could take a major step in doing so if you closed the pay parity gap. That in effect, that by paying women single mothers equal pay for equal work, you could reduce the poverty rate among children by over 20%. What a startling fact. Well, the fact is, is that we've been fighting this for a long time, and Mr. President, I urge the adoption of this amendment. I think it makes important fiscal policy, and it's important for the family's checkbook and our federal checkbook. And let me close with these words, remarks. Uh, I think it was a day before in the New York Times, they were talking about how we're essentially subsidizing those people who pay the minimum wage. Now, my background is that of a social worker. You're familiar with that, Mr. President. But when you look at the four major components of government subsidies to the poor, Medicaid, TANF, uh, the Child Care Development Subsidy, um, and there's one other thing that I just don't recall right this minute. We're actually people who are working every single, oh, food stamps, working every single day, they're eligible for government subsidies because they're not paid enough for what they do. Now, and what we often find is not only is the minimum wage a terrible place to begin, but as you move up the work ladder, Often, women are in jobs where they are paid less than the men who, um, who work beside them. And as a result, and often is the case, we end up then, by dealing with that, by us paying for it in Medicaid and in food stamps and in other, some of the, uh, and the earned income uh, tax credit. Now, I support those programs. I think when people are poor, they need our help. But our goal is to make sure that if you are poor and you want to have a way to get ahead, we should help you. And if you want to be middle class, we should help you get there. And one of the ways to do that is to make sure we pay equal pay for equal work. Now, Mr. President, I hope that my amendment is adopted. I could debate this in more, sen in more ways. But year after year, we come and we show the, the disparity between what women make from men for the same job. Now, this isn't just a woman's issue. The men here, many men here support this. And I can tell you who supports this. Fathers, 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 fathers. Why do they support it? They work hard to make sure, that in many instances, their daughters get a break, try to get an education, try to get ahead, only to find that though they shoulder the same responsibilities for corp, uh, car payments, paying off student loans, all of that, that they in fact are not paid equal pay for equal work. We can change that by voting for the Mikulski Amendment uh, in this budget bill. Mr. President, uh, I yield the floor.